Hello, hello, test mic, test mic, one, two, three, one, two, three. Hello, 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 mic one. Okay, we're back. So, good evening once again. So, let's start our prayer meeting with some singing. And now our brethren commented right now that they can hear us. Okay, so we praise and thank God for that. So, let's pray for... Our service, most especially this um, tonight, uh, we had a bad weather outside, so let's uh, pray to God that God will you know, uh, give us the good um, um, technology, and we're, we're praying that God, the service will be a blessing to everyone. So may I request everyone to please stand as we sing Onward Christian Soldier, <laughs> 620. Onward, Christian soldier. On the first, same. Onward, Christian soldiers, marching as to war. With the cross of Jesus, going on before. Christ the royal master, leads again. The fall forward into battle, see his banners go onward, Christian soldiers marching as to one with the cross of Jesus going on before on the second. Like a mighty army moves the church of God. Brothers, we are treading where the saints have trod. We are not divided, all one body we, one in hope and doctrine. One in charity, onward Christian soldiers, marching as to one, with the cross of Jesus going on before. On the third, onward then ye people, join our happy Blend with our sure voices in the triumph song. Glory, Lord, and honor unto Christ the King. This through countless ages, man and angels sing. Onward, Christian soldiers marching as to war with the cross of Jesus going on before. Amen. We are moving onward, okay, forward for God's glory. Okay, so let's sing another song Victory in Jesus 812. And after this song, I would like to request Brother Robert to open us in a word of prayer, okay? Victory in Jesus. On the first now. I heard an old, old story How the Savior came from glory How He gave His life on Calvary To save a wretch like me I heard about his groaning of his precious blood's atoning. I repented of my sin and won the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with this redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is to him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. On the 
second. I heard about his healing, of his cleansing power revealing, how he made the lame to walk again, and caused the blind to see. And then I cry, dear Jesus, come and heal my broken spirit. And somehow Jesus came and brought to me the victory. Amen. Oh, victory, Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me. about a mansion he has built for me in glory and I heard about the streets of gold beyond the crystal sea about the angels singing and the old redemption story and some sweet day I'll sing up there the song of victory. Oh, victory, Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. and close our eyes in prayer our dear God and loving Father Lord we are so grateful once again to gather here in the house of worship Lord we thank you O oh Lord and we glorify your name because uh, you're worthy to be praised O oh Lord because you are the King of Kings and Lord of Lords Lord we pray that as we study that word that you give us Lord wisdom and understanding and may you anoint the lips of our speaker tonight, Brother Bobby, O Lord. And thank you, Lord, for giving us the ministry like this, Lord, that we could uh, uh, be uh, um, help to our pastors and good example to our brethren, Lord. And pray, Lord, that you will forgive us, Lord, from all our sins. And I pray, Lord, as this uh, bad weather going on outside, may you protect us, Lord, in, in this house, in this house of worship, O Lord. And once again, we thank you and we glorify your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. 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 Thank you, Brother Robert, for that prayer. You may now be seated. Let's pray that God will give us a good uh, connection. Amen. And wag sana mag brown out. <laughs> okay. So um, let's sing another song. And after this song, we will have our prayer um, requests and praises to be mentioned. So let's sing in the garden 320. 320 in our hymn, in the garden. Okay, on the first same. I come to the garden alone while the dew is still on the roses and the voice I hear. Son of God discloses and he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own and the joy we share as we tell Ever 
that you are encouraged for those songs that we sang tonight. Amen. So this time we'll have our praises and prayer requests. By the way, thank you for our musicians for tonight, Sister Rochelle and Pastor Sam for playing the instrument. So let's have our praises first. Amen. All, uh, the first list that we have here is the successful family camp. Amen. To 2020, we truly enjoy the fellowship, okay, the messages from God's word, amen, uh, the food, and also uh, our faith is um, revived once again, amen. We praise and thank God for that, and we truly enjoy the games also, and thank you for our um, coordinators, okay, and game master, Sister Rochelle, God bless your life, and also Brother Gilbert for helping out. Okay, so, and also for the teams, amen? We praise and thank God for red team, yeah. blue team, and white team, amen? So, walang, walang natalo kasi puro manalo yung leaders. <laughs> okay, so we praise and thank God for that, okay? So, looking forward for next family camp, amen? And let's pray for that event. And also, we had a baptism on that um, camp, okay? We praise and thank God for their life, for their obedience to follow the Lord in water baptism, Just to pray for them that they will continue to grow in their faith. Okay, uh, let's pray for Brother Jay, uh, Brother Anthony, and Sister Eliza. Okay, so let's pray for our three um, newly um, member of our church. Amen. We praise and thank God for, for their life. And also here, a praise says, um, a message from Pastor Miles, and I'm going to Read it. Uh, hello, Bergen Bible Baptist Church. I want to thank, I want to thank you for inviting us to your family camp. We thoroughly enjoyed it all and have been tremendously blessed by your sweet fellowship. We have been refreshed spiritually and physically. What an encouragement to see you all joyfully and excited serving the Lord. May the Lord continue to bless the tenderness of your hearts from his word and the salvation of souls. More power from the Holy Spirit be upon you all. Lord willing, we want to go back and join the family, the camp as campers and be of help in any way. To God be the glory, great things he has done. So we praise and thank God for the life of Pastor Miles and thank you for all the messages that you shared to us. 
and from all the sacrifices that you gone through through, the, through through your trouble okay even though um, there are some uh, difficulties regarding your trouble but we uh, praise and thank God for that okay so praises here also from sister Angie Dizon I praise and thank God for healing my daughter Jocelyn thank you BBBC family for your prayers for my daughter she is discharged already from the hospital and she is now getting better thank you so much and also for all the pastors and friends for your prayers praise God and to God be the glory so we praise and thank God for that answered prayer and also uh, praises from Pastor J. Manuel thank God for answer to our prayers we met Jared's doctor and showed the lab result and he is anemic there's another several outcomes not within normal range let's continue to pray for our son thank you so much okay so uh, let's pray continually um, to Jared okay let's pray for him and also um, celebration of birthday this week <laughs> happy okay <laughs> Happy birthday to Brother Anthony Bautista on Friday the 13th, okay, this coming Friday, okay, so that's why he's not happy there in the picture, and it's hot on Friday, I believe, or, or on Thursday, so happy, happy birthday, Brother Anthony, and more a blessing to come to your life, amen, so um, let's have our um, prayer request tonight. Um, request from Pastor Samuel Manalo pray for Chris Sari and the whole family and the husband of our cousin Grace in California positive for COVID and my aunt Conchita okay, uh, the sister of um, Pastor Abelardo all of them are quarantined so uh, please include them in your prayers and from Pastor uh, Abel Manalo, safe travel to the Philippines this coming August 19. Uh, let's pray for strength and protection and and the quarantine that he's, <laughs> he's going to face in the Philippines. So let's pray for him. Okay, so and also comfort and strength for Brother Johnny and his family. His uncle passed away last week. And also, let's pray for this. Uh, recently, um, we had um, um, news okay, from the Philippines. Comfort and strength to the family of Mrs. Angelita Tipay, if you know her. A mother-in-law of Pastor J.P. Landingin, a mother of Sister Naomi. Uh, she went home to be with the Lord yesterday. So pray, please pray for uh, God's comfort and strength to the family. Okay, so... These are the regulars that we have on our list. Let's pray for English review of Sister Kim Minano, Sister Hazel Manalo, Dusty Paklev for immigrant visa. And also let's pray for Tata Alfredo Yambot, Evangelist Herb and Sister March Brill, Sister Paz Norella, Sister Luming Tolentino, Sister Naomi Orbistondo, Sister Emya Bildan. Let's pray also for Sister Mary Ann Revilla. Uh, Brother Hector De Castro, Teddy De Castro, Edward Cave, Maria Simbenko, uh, Dr. Myron and Mrs. Geiler. Uh, let's pray for Sister Shirley Rowald and Brother June Herrera. Okay, or Pastor June Herrera. Let's pray for him, the brother of Pastor Manny okay, in the Philippines. Stage 4 cancer. Okay, and also our ministry. Let's pray for nursing home ministry. Uh, it will be on August 14 this coming saturday and let's pray for the miguel family house blessing on the 21st okay let's pray for that august 21st and also uh, usa philippines and world government national leaders conflict in the middle east and peace in israel let's pray for god's protection to everyone from covid and the new delta variant and pastors uh, pastoral staff deacons church leaders members and their families and save loved ones, families, and friends. Let's include them in our prayers. And all the missionaries, pastors, spiritual frontliners, 
Let's pray for our frontliners as well here in our church and their families. Okay, so anything else from our list? All right, um, message here from Pastor Max. Pastor Max, Mendoza and Sister Josie are watching from Hyde Park, Massachusetts at Herrera's residence. Hi po sa inyo. Good evening. Okay, so do we have any prayer request? Okay, from Sister Rachel Oliveros. Um, good evening everyone. Please pray for my medical technologist niece working in the medical center in Maine contracted COVID-19 even though she got the doses of Moderna vaccine. She is now quarantined for two weeks. The hospital is experiencing COVID-19 outbreak right now. Okay, so let's pray for her knees and also uh, praises from Sister Naomi Colim. My sister Elsie and son-in-law Clarence are both home and are on their way to full recovery. Thank God for His healing, grace, and mercy. Thank you, dear pastors and prayer warriors, for your caring hearts. Appreciate your prayers. God is good. Amen. Praise and thank God for that wonderful answer prayer. Okay. So, anything else? All right. So, I think that's all about it. And let's have our prayer time. Let's pray silently. And after the song, we will close in a word of prayer. So, thank you very much.
Let's pray. Our gracious God, Heavenly Father, we are so thankful, Lord, for the blessings and the grace, mercy, O Lord. It's always available for us, O Lord God. Thank you, Lord, for who you are in our lives. Thank you, Lord, for our, our salvation through the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, God, for your um, um, the security of our um, salvation, O Lord God. And thank you, Lord, for everything that you entrusted to us, O Lord. And thank you for this life that you have given, O Lord God, that we can be, be able to use for thee, O Lord. And thank you, Lord, for this time uh, that we just had a wonderful prayer time, O Lord. I pray that you bless our request and even uh, the praises, O Lord. And we are so thankful, O Lord, for answering our prayers. And be with our uh, request, O Lord, tonight. I pray, Lord, that you... Um, Give us the answer, O Lord, according to your will, according to thy power, O Lord God, and your time. We praise and thank thee, O Lord, and we want to say that we love you, we honor thee, in Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. So thank you very much, church and brethren. So at this time, I would like to call Pastor Sam to give us the announcement. Truly tonight, mercy drops are falling, but for the showers we Clean the showers of blessings spiritually tonight. It's good to be back in the church. Uh, we truly had a wonderful weekend for our family camp. So we thank God for all the answered prayers for provision and protection. And thank God we can give our church uh, facility a sabbatical like right, once a year. But um, for a quick uh, few announcements, uh, this coming Friday, we'll resume our home Bible study. Some are meeting uh, in person. Some are uh, virtual. So uh, whatever it is, may have a good time of studying God's Word together. Then on Saturday, we have a nursing home ministry and choir practice, and also our um, prayer chain ministry, I believe our 72nd week of uh, praying uh, for one another with one another for an hour with uh, a lot of prayer requests that we have in our church, among our family and friends and other mission ministries. So let's uh, take an advantage of that to um, pray for one another. So tonight uh, we're excited to hear God's word and we thank uh, our brethren who are watching with us virtually even though we have some technical difficulties at the start but we thank God for um, his provision and we know that our gathering tonight is never in vain. Amen? Amen? Because we are gathered in the name of Christ and we are expecting a blessing from him as we study his word. So let me call our special music. I think a Pastor um, Jeter Abel and myself will sing a song. Uh, for God's glory, uh, that tells us that our God is always able. He is able. Na parang ano extension. So I hope the message will be a blessing. sad and lonely If it was all that I could understand But then one day I prayed Lord Jesus save me I placed it all into His loving hand and found that he was more than able to enable me with overcoming power more than able to get victory again more than able to complete the task no matter what the hour more than able to defeat this world of sin if you struggle with the lord as much too hard to carry give it up and let the master's work begin Find that He is more than able to get blessings from its table, more than able to get victory again. My friend, can you relate to what we're sharing? Are you amazed at what the Lord can do? Have you ever given Him a load to carry? And 
Watch him work as he brought you safely through and found that he was more than able, able to enable you with overcoming power more than able to get victory again more than able to complete the task no matter what the hour more than able to defeat this world of sin if you struggle with a load that's much too hard to carry, give it up and let the Master's work begin. You'll find that He is more than able to get blessings from its table, more than able to get victory again. If you struggle with a load that's much too hard to carry, give it up and let the Master's work begin. You'll find that He is more than able to get blessings from its table. More than able to get victory again. Amen. Thank God God is able and I know He will enable our speaker tonight to preach the word of God and be a blessing to us. Amen. Brother Bob, please come. Para akong nanood ng concert ng Gaither Band. Amen. Beautiful song. Beautiful message as well. Magandang gabi po sa ating lahat. Good evening, everyone. And uh, I think uh, meron pa tayong hangover, na? After effect of that beautiful family camp. Amen. Amen. I wish, I, I heard people that uh, they're wishing that we could stay there longer. Saan ka pa naman makakita ng you eat? Huh? You play? <laughs> you sleep? And you enjoy the fellowship and the preaching of God's word, right? Oh, what a life! <laughs> so, next time we pray that uh, maybe uh, God will allow us, you know, to go there maybe earlier or whatever the plan is. It will be doable. But anyway, uh, tonight, as uh, Brother Robert will always say, it's a privilege to preach the word of God. And uh, indeed, in family camp, we're so blessed with all those preaching, Amen. those uh, devotions. Yeah, the, uh, I don't, I don't know about you, but uh, me personally, I was uh, revived uh, by the grace of God. And so, hopefully, that we can, you know, carry on, and have those uh, messages, you know, uh, put a fire into our hearts as we continue to serve the Lord. Okay, before. Uh, uh, maybe uh, before I will um, read the verse, I will just read the verse. It's a very short, ver short verse and uh, very familiar to everyone. Second Corinthians 2, I mean, Second Corinthians 5, verse 7. And thank uh, God for Pastor Abel again uh, doing my, our outline every Wednesday. It's a be beautiful presentation every time. Amen. Look at that. Amen. The challenges of faith. It's, it's just that I cannot see while I'm preaching, so I have to watch again later on because I really like the graphics. <laughs> it speaks a lot, you know. All right, let's pray first. Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you once again for tonight. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us to be here. And we acknowledge, Lord, your faithfulness into our lives. And it's only by your grace and mercy. Lord, please forgive us, cleanse us, purify us, O God. Search our heart. Prepare us, O oh God, for thy holy word tonight. Please forgive us from all our sins. Please be with our folks, brethren who are not with us. Bless those who are watching virtually. And bless those who are sick, our brethren who are not feeling well. We just commit them unto you this time, Lord God. Well, I just pray to God that you will bless me, give me an organized mind as I would uh, Preach, Lord, the message that you have given me. Thank you, Lord, for guiding me as, as, as uh, I prepared this, as I was preparing this message. Lord, be with us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 7. For we walk by faith 
and not by sight. For we walk by faith, not by sight, to be exact. So I entitled this message, The Challenges of Faith. You know, these are things that will affect our faith, and it's either weakens or strengthens our faith. There are things, I would say, I will say it again, there are things that will affect our faith, and it's either or either weakens or strengthens our faith. The apostles of Jesus prayed in Luke chapter 17, verse 5. They said, Lord, increase our faith. You know, if the apostles prayed this kind of prayer, where does that leave us? Amen. This prayer shows that our faith is not always strong and powerful. There are events or experiences that we encounter in life, whether expected or unexpected, that will never or will either discourage or encourage us, move us to go forward or draw us backward, cause us to be cheerful or be depressed, or cause us to feel defeated and would like to quit. Tonight, I would like to share some realities in life that will challenge our faith. Number one is sight. Number two is sufferings. Number three, decisions. Or if you want it alliterated, I put their selections. Number four, expectations or suppositions. Let's go to number one, sight. You know, there was a time when someone recited this verse, for we walk by faith, not by sight, I will always say amen without understanding what it really means. <laughs> this is contrary with the saying that goes, to see is to believe. So the question tonight is, how can I use faith to see? Can I prove what I cannot see as an evidence of what? I claim to be true. Why did Paul say walk by faith, not by sight? And so what I did is to study and read the context of verse 7. And that's what we always say, uh, do, right? So that it will not make the uh, verse as a pretext. Because it says a verse without a context is a pretext. Paul said in chapter 6, beginning verse 14, knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise up us, shall raise up us also by Jesus, and shall present us with you. For all things are for your sakes, that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of God. For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, Yet the inward man is renewed day by day. Take note, verse 17. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. And in uh, chapter uh, 5, verse, uh, chapter 6, verse 1, I'm sorry, I think... Um, chapter 7, chapter 5. For we know, where it says, For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God and house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. So, I think I missed that verse. Second Corinthians 5 1. Yeah, there you go. I'm sorry. Second Corinthians 5 1. Okay, so basing from these verses, here is my thought number one. We can see God's realm through faith by his word, the Bible. From these verses, I came to realize that by believing, Definition of faith here. We can see God's realm through the faith that he has given us through his word, the Bible. You know what it says, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. 
It is not our natural sight that can peer into God's kingdom, but with the faith that the Lord has given us. The things we see now will soon be gone, but the things we cannot see will last forever. By faith, we can now know that when this earthly tent we live in is taken down, by faith, we can now know that when this earthly tent we live in, in, we live in is taken down, that is when we die and leave this earthly body, we will have a house in heaven, an eternal body made for us by God, by God himself and not by human hands. Before we got saved, before we were born again, we lived our life based on what we were able to see with our eyes. And by what our body can be able to hear, touch, see, and smell. But now that we are born again, we are supposed to live our life by faith with the guidance of the Holy Spirit and the promises of God that cannot lie. Now we can read 2 Corinthians 5-7 as living by what we believe will happen, not by what we can see. Living by what we believe will happen, not by what we can see. Paul's point is that as believers, we are not supposed to live by what we can see with our natural eyes, but rather by what we see in what we believe. You know, many accuse us of having a blind faith. But I was thinking, if there is such thing as a blind faith, that means there's also a type of faith that can see. A sighted, mindful, and perceptive faith. And that is the kind of faith the Lord Jesus Christ gave to us. Because the Bible says Jesus Christ is the author and finisher of our faith. In Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2, looking unto Jesus the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. So with and through Jesus Christ, we can walk by faith and not by sight. Number two, sufferings. Cambridge Dictionary defines suffering as the physical and mental pain that we feel. At times, the pain is in varying degree, depending on what type of sickness and experience we are going through. One of the main reasons why many do not believe in the existence of God is because of suffering. They just can't reconcile while a loving God allows suffering. But for the Christians, at times, it causes discouragements. Have you been discouraged? It causes doubts and depression. Please do not go with the idea that a Christian is immune from depression now. Some say if you are saved, you are supposed to be resistant of depression. Hindi ka dapat ma-depress. Those who teach this just declared they are better than the prophet Elijah. They're better than King David, the prophet Jeremiah, and Job. Let me remind of Elijah, a prophet, a biblical hero, and person of faith. He was seriously, seriously depressed. You know, in 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 4, this is what he said. It is enough. Now, O oh Lord, take away my life, for I am not better than my fathers. Imagine that. Asking God to take his life. Let me remind you of King David, the beloved king of Israel, the man after God's heart. He said in Psalm 6, 6 to 7, I am weary with my groaning. All the night make I my bed to swim. I water my couch with my tears. What a graphic <laughs> uh, description of his uh, depression. Mine eye is consumed because of grief. 
It waxeth old because of all mine enemies. Let me remind of Jeremiah, a major prophet chosen by God to proclaim the truth and warn others about it. He had a lifelong battle with sadness and wrote an entire book of his sorrow called Lamentations. In Lamentations chapter 2, verse 11, he says, Mine eyes do fail with tears. My bowels are troubled. My liver is poured upon the earth for the destruction of the daughter of my people. In other words, he cried until the tears no longer come out. As he said, my heart is broken. Let me remind of Job. We're so familiar with Job. Amen. The man was perfect. The Bible states he was perfect and upright and one that feared God and eschewed or eschewed evil. In Job 30, 16 to 20, he said, And now my soul is poured out upon me. The days of affliction have taken hold upon me. My bones are pierced in me in the night season, and my sinews take no rest. By the great force of my disease is my garment changed. It bindeth me about as the collar of my coat. He hath cast me into the mire, and I am become like dust and ashes. I cry unto thee, and thou dost not hear me. I stand up, and thou regardest me not. You know, admittedly, it is hard to explain suffering and pain. Even among the brightest theologians in the Christian circle. But that does not mean to say that the Bible is silent about it. So my thought number one is this. The truth is, Jesus can turn our suffering for the glory of God. Remember the miracles he performed to people who were in deep pain. Like for instance, Lazarus. Lazarus' sisters and friends. In John eleven twenty one, it states, Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hast been here, my brother had not died. And in verse 32, Then when Mary, this time Mary, the sister of Martha, Then when Mary was come where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet, saying unto him, Lord, if thou hast been here, my brother had not died. You know, how many times did we say the same thing to our Lord? Lord, if you have done something, this tragedy should have never happened. But take note, verses 33 to 35. When Jesus therefore saw her weeping, and the Jews also weeping, which came with her, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled. And your favorite verse, verse 35, Jesus wept. Those who cannot memorize verses from the Bible, this is their favorite verse. But you know what? Sometimes uh, we laugh when we read this verse, but it is very important to know that the reason Jesus wept in that event was because he feels their pain. Jesus feels our suffering and pain. Amen. He turned their pain for the glory of God. You know, that's, that's a good news for us. He turned their pain for the glory of God. He said, this happened in order for me to show the glory of God. In verse 4, when Jesus heard that, he said, this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Think about the magnitude, the privilege of our sufferings being accounted to happen for the glory of God. Thought number two, sometimes we need pain in order to draw closer to God. I like to illustrate this with a story about a teenager named Ashley Blocker. 
This young girl has a rare disease called CIPA, C-I-P-A, congenital insensitivity to pain with anhydrosis. You can stab her back with a knife and she wouldn't feel it. She could step on a nail and don't feel any pain. She can put her hands into a burner and does not feel the heat. When she played sports, she is fearless. After every game, her mom inspects every part of her body to make sure that she has no cut, bruise, and broken bones. When CNN interviewed her mom, she said that every night her prayer to God is this. Lord, please give my daughter the ability to feel pain. Brethren, if in our physical world we experience suffering as a reminder, is it possible to think that God through pain and suffering is reminding us into the reality of what life really is or what life is all about when we walk away from God? Suffering should not cause us to walk away, but to draw us closer to God. Amen. Thought number three. Sometimes suffering will give us the strength to be strong by God's grace. Remember Paul's thorn in the flesh? Brother Robert, did you memorize these verses already? Because <laughs> I know you have your thorn in the flesh as well. 2 Corinthians 12, 7 to 10, And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan, to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I strong. You know, the greatest challenge for us is to believe that Jesus Christ's grace is sufficient when faced with great suffering. When we don't understand what is happening, like the Apostle Paul, let us pray that we could meet our sufferings and pain with a positive attitude because Jesus promised in his word that his grace is sufficient. In 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 7 to 8, that the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Take note of this. This is a promise. Might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. That is the type of suffering for a Christian. It will be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Whom having not seen ye love. We have not seen the Lord Jesus Christ physically, right? We are looking at him through the eyes of faith. In whom thou now, in whom thou now ye see him not yet believing. Ye rejoice with joy, unspeakable and full of glory. Jesus said in 16 verse 33, These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. I would say this. Jesus hasn't changed, even though the circumstances have. Number three, decisions. At times, the difficulty of making the right decision affects our faith in the Lord. Amen? Amen. Wrong decisions will put us into trouble. Thus we say, if only God showed me the right way. <laughs> like for instance, you know, during our family camp, I would like to use this as an illustration. And I hope for, 
you will not complain or something. <laughs> Violent reaction. <laughs> well, your desire was for God to put you in the winning team. Okay? That was your prayer. So you prayed, Lord, please put me in the winning team. But for some reason, God guided Sister J to put your name with the red team and the blue team. So you ask, was my membership predestined without my choosing? Or I should have requested Sister J to put my name with the white team? But the problem is, do you know that the white team will win? Yes, at times, we struggle with our decisions. Sometimes we are not sure if it's God's will, if it's God's will or self-will. Big difference. There are times that we wish God will show us crystal, crystal clear which decision to make. We wish to see a green light for the right choice and a stoplight for the wrong choice. But sometimes, even if we know that our choice is not God's will, we still wish for the green light to flash. Oh, how we wish the green light flashes when we like a guy. Is he the right guy for me? And the Bible flashed the red light in your face, but suddenly you became colorblind. You are looking at a flashing red light, but you still try to justify it as a green light. Baka ma-save. Baka magbago. You know? Sometimes when our choice is wrapped with darkness, we do not know what to do. When the light is yellow, we do not know if we are going through and not beat the red light. Or we are already in the middle and must choose in a split second to speed forward or do a sudden stop and back up. There are possible conse consequences that will happen. Accident, a speeding violation ticket, or hurting another driver following behind, you know, trying to beat the red light like you do. <laughs> How about the choices of our loved ones? How often do you find yourself at odds with the decisions your adult children make? Perhaps you don't approve of their lifestyles how they manage their finances or their type of work or even how they dress. Yes, making decisions can challenge our faith. In the Christian life, there are light decisions to make and there are also very difficult and hard ones to make. And yes, again, admittedly, it is difficult, but the Bible is not silent about it. So here is my thought number one. If God will always show us the right decisions to make, then we do not need faith anymore. The Bible has a great warning about this, Hebrews 11 verse 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligent, diligently seek him. You know, if God will always show us the right choice or decisions to make, then why do we need faith? Amen. We will be like robots, automated to do what is programmed in us. There is no such thing as free will if we are forced to do things that we do not like. Same thing with love. Love is not love anymore when it is forced. What will happen if God forces a person to choose to go to heaven, but does not want to go there? He is not only violating his free will to choose, but heaven will be like hell for that person. Because he doesn't want to go there. Thought number two. I believe at times God is not showing us the easy way to decide because he wanted us to trust him more. Remember Abraham and Isaac? Can you imagine the horror of being asked to sacrifice your child? We have a baby here. 
<laughs> Can you imagine Natalie and Ryan, right? A child you waited years to welcome to this world. Abraham was challenged by God in this very way. And while we are not being asked for such a sacrifice, we can take a different lesson from Abraham's hard decision to follow God's command. You know, from Abraham's experience, I personally believe the best thing to do when in doubt is to trust God. A favorite verse, I believe, of Brother Robert, Proverbs 3, 5 to 6. Oh, Sister Hazel, right? Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding in all thy ways. Acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. I like the word trust. Trust in the Lord. And it says with all, all right? Not some or part, but with all thine heart. I think that's the key. That's the secret. When we are in doubt, we don't know what to do, just give it to the Lord. Give it to the Lord. Isaiah 26, verses 3 to 4. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusteth in thee. Trust ye in the Lord forever, for in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. Amen. You know Moses? Moses trusted God by the eyes of faith. Hebrews 11, 27, you are so familiar with this verse, but I would like to underscore a phrase here that will really enlighten what uh, Paul said, walk by faith, not by sight. Hebrews eleven twenty seven, By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured, take note now, as seeing him who is invisible. How could that be? <laughs> Seeing him who is invisible. Here is a classic model of deciding because he can see the invisible. How? By sight? No. By faith. By believing God. How about Noah? Hebrews eleven seven. By faith Noah being one of God of things. Take note. Not seen as yet. You know, Noah decided to follow God even if he did not see what rain looks like or what flood can do but he saw it by faith in other words he believes because god told him so can we believe if god told us so of course others verse 36 to 39 and in verse 39 it says and these all having obtained a good report through faith received not the promise but they keep on going. They, they press on pressing on until they die. You know, all these martyrs of the faith earned a good reputation because of their faith. Even if none of them receive all that God hath promised, they just decided to place their trust or their faith in God's promise of a better life after resurrection. Last but not the least, expectations. And we'll just go straight to the point. I'm running out of time. Thought number one. Our expectations can weaken our faith if we expect things to happen the way we want it to be. You know, at times we get discouraged because our expectations from the Lord did not happen. The answer to our prayers were not according to our expectation. Unmet expectations sometimes causes us to doubt the Lord. So I would say we must always align our expectations with the will of God. We thank God that as his child, his plan is always good for us. Amen? Amen. At times the reason God is not giving what we want is because he knows it's not good for us. We think it's good for us, but for him it's not. If he gives something that he knows it's not good for us, then he is not a good God. We always say God is good all the time. That's why in Romans 8.28, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. 
in 1 John 5.14, and this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything, take note, this is the key, according to his will, he heareth us. Thought number two, our expectations can weaken our faith if we misinterpret God's promises from the Bible. When we read promises from the Bible, we should not interpret it with our perspective, but in God's perspective. Right context. This is how the scoffers of Peter's day mock the promise of the second coming of the Lord. And 2 Peter 3, 3 to 4, knowing this first that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lust and saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. You know, the atheists, they say this to us. Are we feeling the same? We expect the Lord to come now. We struggle with our patience to wait, especially with this pandemic. But you know the answer in verse 8 to 10, right? In verse 9, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count his slackness, but is long-suffering to us, word, not willing that any should par perish, that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. Our expectation for God's promise for a better future is guaranteed, brothers and sisters, in the Lord. All we must do is trust the one who promised. Amen. Romans 8, 24 to 25, For we are saved by hope, but hope that is sin is not hope. For what a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for? Now in verse 25, But if we hope for that we see not. Now, there you go again, the eyes of faith. But if we hope for that we see not, then we do with Patience, wait for it. And that's what we are doing. Amen? Amen. Hebrews 6.12 That ye be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Hebrews 11.13 This all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off. There you go again, the eyes of faith. And were pers persuaded of them and embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. And I would conclude with this verse. 2 Corinthians 4.18 While we look not at the things which are seen, okay, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. I will leave you with this question. Do we have the faith for this verse? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you once again for reminding us about the challenges of faith. But we just praise and thank you, Lord, that the faith that you have given us came directly from the author and finisher, the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for the faith that you have given us, Lord, and help us to use it properly. Trusting the Lord for everything. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen to that. We praise and thank God for the blessing of God's word tonight. Were you blessed? Amen. Amen. Thank God for reminding us, Brother Bobby, as God's children, we need to walk by faith and not by sight because it's always a blessing and a privilege to walk by faith. It makes us more dependent upon God. So, folks, keep on reading our Bible and praying for one another. And we'll see you next time. God bless you all.